Hello, so no video log for some time. Footage you're going to see goes back quite a while here. Um, I'm going to get the training stuff out of the way first before we get onto the title and the meat of the video. So the videos you're seeing are in chronological order and you're basically going to see a continuation of my sumo deadlift progression from previous video logs. If you've seen the past ones, it started off as a more shaky movement and really a conventional deadlift with wide legs rather than a proper sumo. So there's going to be lots of experimenting with setup, stance width and things like that. And if you're interested in that, I can do a dedicated video on sumo deadlift later on. Just let me know in the comments or on Facebook or whatever. Um, I've tended to settle towards a wider stance just for me uh, because of my rubbish upper back it seems to work best for me some people find semi sumo better it's worth experimenting and seeing what works best also finally there's an abs movement that I'm quite liking uh, it seems to target the rectus and transversus abdominis so that's quite um, a good bang for your buck movement anyway I've had quite a rough six months uh, I lost my dad who was my best friend really and uh, a few other issues that were on par with that in quick succession so obviously training took a bit of a hit I'm gonna go through the mistakes that I made uh, lessons learned and how you can avoid them as well when life gets in the way it often takes the center stage and you likely won't have the mental resources or for training and dieting all the time you can't then expect to continue to follow the plan as written so damage limitation is the key generally you could move in a number of ways under stress depending on your state and disposition on the extreme end of things um, going on an all-out self-destructive binge or on the other side um, forgetting to eat and withdrawing equally using dieting and training as a distraction rather than actively processing what's going on some people something that people repeatedly told me is that if grief goes unprocessed then it has to manifest psychologically in some other way so maybe a year later or um, through other self-destructive behaviors or neuroses even things like developing a twitch another outcome could just be reverting to autopilot in which case you are then at the mercy of your previous habits um, you might have heard I think it's a Royal Marines quote of under stress we revert to our training Johnny has written a lot more on that stuff on the main site on hab habit development and things so worth checking out if you're interested um, I was very lucky to have Johnny as my friend and Eric Helms as my coach um, who have both been so much more than that and both massive sources of support and objectivity and kept me from veering into those pitfalls that I've just mentioned so lesson number one get a coach um, develop the relationship first so that they can then they're then able to help you through thick and thin um, find a, a coach mentor or friend that you resonate with and that you trust on a number of levels so that they can take on the role of managing your diet and training it's one less thing that you shouldn't have to worry about um, when life gets in the way and often even at the best of times making your own training decisions doesn't lead to the best choices so it's good to just outsource that entirely next mistake was that I was eating about 3200 calories with a stable body weight in a kind of off season um, over the last few months and then I asked Eric to reduce my training frequency so I had some more time to focus on other things we did that and so we redu reduced from four times a week to three times a week but with no change in calories and what happened was over quite a short period maybe four to six weeks I gained uh, two kilograms and visible change in body composition so what I should have done in retrospect is adjust the calories to match the frequency and the lower volume that I was training with so recommendation number two match calories to volume and frequency thirdly another thing that Eric has mentioned is stress is stress is stress and despite the program looking easier on paper or, or looking the same it felt a lot harder and I was always feeling beaten up and the weights just felt a lot heavier despite the fact that there was no real change in physical stress and uh, 
what's something that um, I didn't really appreciate until now is that something psychologically can have a real effect on your recovery capacity and your ability to actually um, you know your tolerance to physical stress as well it's like you've got a limited amount of currency and it's it a lot of that resource has been taken up so you can't then expect to still handle the same total volume so you've got to make adjustments for that and again it's better to have someone else make those adjustments for you by looking at your performance rather than you second guessing it and thinking like oh yeah I can handle more volume like it's fine finally I don't want to come across as sanctimonious but it is true that you only have one set of parents and they've likely done a hell of a lot for you even if they're dicks um, the least that your mum did is carry you around for nine months and uh, not be able to deadlift during that time so for my sake um, continually ask are your parents happy and is there anything that you can do to make them happier or make their lives easier um, could you visit them more maybe and just tell them and show them that you love them because once they're gone they're gone and um, there's always going to be those regrets so um, yeah that's all for now anyway let me know if you have any questions and uh, if you're interested in sumo progression any kind of tips that I've picked up over the last 12 months really of switching to sumo and I hope this video was useful speak to you guys soon